There was something about the original SX Mini SL class that really bugged me. So does the V2 address that issue? Ah, the Yeehi chip, and it's as prolific as the Vupu gene or evolved DNA, and just like those, it has its friends and foes. Personally, it doesn't really matter to me as long as it does what it claims to do, and doesn't bugger up after a short period of time. So the original SL class was released three, maybe four years ago, and I remember purchasing one. I know I wanted the Stabwood version, but... That was way too expensive for my vape budget. So without further ado comes the V2 upgrade. And it's had some aesthetical alterations. And for the better in my opinion. So have at you with a few specs, shall we? Size is 89.1 by 42.3 by 30.2 mil. And weighs 136 grams. It will take a single 18650 battery with the adapter or a larger 2700 or larger still 21700 battery. The output is between 5 and 100 watts. The screen is the same as before 0.96 inch but this time we have IPS FARB colour screen. And the vape modes are variable wattage, variable voltage and temperature control. So I mentioned the one thing that was bugging me at the start of the video, and this is it. And I'm pleased to say there's a massive difference to the threading on the battery cap. Just a lot easier, just so much easier. Watch as I just look. It's buttery smooth, no problems, no counter threading of any sorts, no crunchiness. So that's a pretty good start for this uh, device. Not bad at all. It bodes well. So do you fancy tagging along as I look at the functionality of this SX Mini SL Class V2? Yeah, let's go. Come on. The Yeehi chip has been upgraded from the SX485J to the SX730J. Yet bypass and buck and boost modes have been ditched. So it's five clicks to turn the device on. When we boot up for the very first time, this is what we'll see. And running across the top is the current battery strength bar, power curve setting, battery as a percentage, number of puffs, mode, which is wattage here, coil resistance, power curve bar, and then the current voltage and the number of amps the battery is pulling. Five clicks of the fire button doesn't turn the device off, it sends us into the main menu. And from here it's system off, joystick up to shut down, depress, thank you, and system off. Not the easiest way of doing it. Another way of accessing the menu screen is to press and hold the joystick button right. This time we can go down to the mode. We choose between watts, temperature control, variable voltage and back out. 
Next we have the puff counter, which will show us the number of puffs for the lifetime of the device as well as the last time the device was turned on. We can also reset here. Tweaks. We can adjust the brightness of the device, reset all settings, average room temperature and auto power. Stats. This will show us the firmware version as well as the chipset. Temperature units, we can choose between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And finally timeout. Choose how long the device stays on between 15 seconds and 90 seconds. Back, exit and out. So with power curve we can determine what kind of vape we're going to get here. It's going to be an initial strong vape as shown by the chart over the course of a 10 second period. If we press down on the joystick we can change from a strong, neutral to a soft initial vape. But there's also the option of three user definable patterns. So if we edit the first one and change the first 0.5 second strength to 150, move across, this one can be 116 and we're moving across as you can see now to five seconds into the vape. The strength of the vape is 137% so you can really tinker around with those power settings over the course of 10 seconds as you can see. So although it's plain to see that the joystick button takes care of most of the menu functionality, it's still three clicks of the fire button to lock the device. And there'll be a lot of people out there pleased to learn and discover that you can't vape while it's locked. Further three clicks will unlock the device. So there we go, it's a quick look around. So what were some of the things that I liked about the SL Class V2? Well, the design and build quality is an improvement over the original for starters. And it's not likely to bug everyone, but the battery threading is no longer an issue for me. Battery management seemed to be more efficient too from the new chip. You get more bang for your buck this time round. And finally, the screen quality is a vast improvement over the original. But of course there are a few negatives as well. The battery meter is sometimes erratic, displaying the wrong strength. Uh, still quite a heavy mod and the chip gets confused between locking and displaying the menu screen. And the menus take some getting used to. Power and down is also a bit of a pain in the arse. There you go, there's a quick look around the SX Mini SL Class V2. Hope you liked what you saw. Catch you on the next one. Take care.